Hello, I'm Tim Harris. This is Julie Harris, and this is Real Estate Coaching Radio. That's right. So make sure that you hit the subscribe button so you won't miss any future episodes. Thanks again for popping by. Hit that like button, and don't forget to leave your comments and questions so we can get right back with you. We will. Thank you for continuing to make our podcast, Real Estate Coaching Radio, the number one listened to podcast for real estate professionals in at least the United States. And let us know what you think about this video. Leave your comments below. Thank you. Welcome back. Today we're focusing on a topic that's very near and dear to Julie and I's heart. It's about real estate coaching. And this is our life's mission and our, been our life's work for the past few decades. And so what we're going to be doing is sharing with you the answer to a question that we receive on a fairly regular basis. What qualifies you to be my real estate coach? And I think that's a great question all of you should be asking. And so what Julie and I did is we really drilled down on really six questions you should be asking and then almost a pre-qualifying you know, questionnaire or pre-qualifying script you should use when interviewing a potential real estate coach. Exactly. We're going to help you sort it all out. So how do you know which real estate coach is right for you personally? By the end of this podcast, you're going to know how to tell the difference and what questions, as Tim said, what are the questions that you should be asking to make the best decision for you? So we're going to deep dive and understand what coaching even is in the first place, because that's you know been different for different people. We're going to define that for you. We're going to help you figure out how to tell a coach from a trainer. And finally, what makes for a great real estate specific coach. And after these points, you can decide with confidence who is the best coach for you, as well as what level of coaching you may be ready for. And I think we should start out by reminding all of them that the notes for today's show um, are down below. So I know and sometimes they get clipped on iTunes and whatnot, but the most important notes are the first, usually first five or six points. So you should be able to see all of our notes for today. So scroll down, look in the, I, you know, open up the show description in iTunes or read, you know, click the more button if you're over on YouTube, wherever, but use our notes and uh, yeah, print these off, you know, cut and paste the notes, print them off. When you're considering hiring a real estate coach, ask these tough questions. There you go. All right. Good intro. So point number one, coaching versus training. Well, a trainer, mentor, broker, or even an office manager suggests to you what you could be doing or tells you what you should be doing. They may or may not have had, have been successful actually doing personally what they're suggesting for you to do. So this is more of a training type of relationship. For example, they may say, you need to have more listings or you need to ask more questions when you meet with buyers. That's an example of training. You could try probate or you know, Bob got a deal once from his BNI group. You could try that. Suggesting versus training. Now, what's the difference? I'm sorry. That's training versus coaching. Now, a coach will ask tons of questions so they know some very specific things about you personally, your experience, your personality, your goals, your finances, and your current skills. They then help you set specific performance goals and make sure that you upgrade your skills to achieve your goals more quickly and with less stress. So a coach motivates you, educates you, gets you into action, and holds you accountable in such a way that you succeed faster than you would on your own. They support you throughout your growth process on good weeks and bad, no matter what the market conditions are or what life may be bringing you. Now, the most important thing, one of the most important things that Julie just said that I hope all of you are drilling down on is the difference between training and coaching. She was just, you know, helping you to understand a trainer is just going to stand in front of you, be it on YouTube or be it in front of a room or even on a, uh, you know, one-on-one -on -one call. And they're just going to serve, they're just going to talk, right? They're going to tell you what to do. They're going to, this, that's training. Coaching is where someone is, uh, Yes, there's an element of training to coaching, but what they're really doing is they're asking you the question, asking you questions that will help you to come to uh, your own path forward that's appropriate for you. In other words, a trainer, and this is what all of you guys, most of you are experiencing, is going to say just prospect or just market or just do YouTube videos or build a team or do that. Those are trainers. There's a place for them in the marketplace, but they're not coaches. Because what's going to happen is you're going to, and this is the mistake we're, you know, obviously a lot of agents are making, is they'll get their real estate licenses or they'll be in a changing market and they've been successful the last 10 years and now they think they need to do something new. And so what then they do is they watch YouTube or whatever, and then they start seeing these real estate trainers, AK, or who are calling themselves coaches, who are telling you, you need to start a YouTube channel. You know, you need to do a lot of marketing and advertising and all the rest of it, but you didn't stop and qualify that person's advice and actually ascertain whether it was the best path forward for you. And so question number two, Julie. 
Well put. I'm glad that you clarified that because it is confusing. A lot of the trainers, uh, as defined by what you just illustrated, still call themselves coaches, but what they're really doing is training. They're telling you to try something without getting into your head and finding out if it's even right for you without quantifying results. So thank you for that clarification. Well, well, Julie, since we're, you appreciate that, and I yeah. appreciate you appreciating that, Here, here's the thing. Is if you are if you're deciding right now what is the you know what are my new sources of lead generation into the future because everything's changed right and now you're making a decision to listen to somebody who's telling you to do a lot of marketing and branding and let's just say you're like most people and you didn't do anything and we're going to get to some specifics here in a second but you didn't do anything to pre-qualify whether that person is uh, essentially you know that you should be listening to. Maybe they're just a marketing and branding salesperson who sells marketing and branding, who's never actually done any marketing and branding themselves, let alone sold real estate before. If you don't ask these questions, here's what happens. You're going to spend time and you're going to spend money and you're going to spend your potential going down a path that probably never works in the first place or might not work for you. That's the mistake that so many agents make. Julie and I have been watching, and I, I mean, we're not ready to publish this result, these results, but what we've been doing for the last five, maybe six years is we've been looking uh, for the essentially the total lifespan of a new licensee to their failure rate. In other words, the average agent typically was failing out of the business in less than four or five years. But Julie and I are seeing reasons, uh, we're seeing evidence that the average agent's failing out within 24 months or less. Now, why is that in this era where there's all these, you know, marketing, branding, uh, buying buyer leads, all the rest of this? Why is it that the failure rate's actually potentially increasing? Well, we believe it's because a lot of the people that are selling stuff to agents aren't really in the real estate business. They're in the selling stuff to agents business, and there's a huge difference. That's exactly right. And not a lot of uh, qualification there, right? right? And that's why we're doing this podcast. So point number two, business performance coaching versus life coaching or therapy. So a performance coach focuses on your success as a business person, your financial goals, the skills necessary to get you into momentum and to keep you there. Now, a life coach or therapist works on personal issues which may or may not affect your business. Life coaches require zero training. You could just, you know, create a logo and throw it on your website. Therapists must be at least holders of a master's degree, and if they advertise as a psychotherapist, they must be licensed in their state. Now, why so these it, are not all the same thing, right? There's actually, so let's let's break this even into a fourth category. There's sure. trainers, which 99.9% .9 of all the people that call themselves coaches are truly trainers, and we're going to get to the heart of knowing whether or not, you know, I'll give you some questions here in a second so you can actually you know, ascertain whether the person's a trainer or a coach, but then there really are three distinct pathways because coaching life coaching and actually, you know, hiring a therapist, those kind of it are, it's confusing. It's a, it's a mush because sometimes what happens is the therapist, the people with the actual licenses or the psychotherapist rather, they'll actually call themselves life coaches, right? Yeah. Or the life coaches will, you know, meander into that. Now, what, what do you want to hire? If you want to hire a life coach, hire a life coach. If you want to go to therapy and hire somebody that's, you know, a psychotherapist that has a medical degree up on their wall, hire that person. You hire a real estate coach because you want a performance coach. A performance coach is completely different than those other categories. Mm -hmm. It's certainly more than a trainer. A performance coach is going to focus on one specific thing. And I'll give you guys a great example. Michael Phelps has the same performance coach that he's had forever. That's somebody who every single day is going to be watching him <laughs> while he's swimming in the pool, uh, starting at 4.30 in the morning. I don't think he does it anymore, but that's what the performance coach does. I can imagine that very rarely does that performance coach ask him anything about his finances or his life goals, or probably his goals as athletically, but beyond that, probably not. A performance coach is not going to ask you about, you know, you're, it's not going to try to psychoanalyze you or act like they're a, a Dr. Phil. You guys get it? So a lot of you, what happens is you hire someone who's a, co a coach and they're a life coach. And I'm here to tell you a life coach is something that is, it's dubious at best. Again, it goes back to what's your qualifications for calling yourself a life coach? Well, I got it accredited by, you know, John Maxwell or I got accredited by somebody else. Well, great for you for having put forth that effort. But what makes you qualified to be my life coach, right? Ask the really tough questions. And then what you'll quickly just figure out is really they just essentially have decided that they're going to be life coaches and they went online and they decided to get a coach, a life coaching certification. You can do it too if you want to be a life coach. There's nothing to it. They're typically like 
online courses that la- that take like three days or something. And then you can call yourself a life coach, right? So again, don't be confused. If you want to be successful at the highest level in a particular activity, be it swimming, be it selling real estate, you want to hire a performance coach, someone who's just going to focus on that one activity. So when you hire Julie and I or anybody in our coaching organization, for example, you're not hiring a life coach. If you want a life coach, we'll refer you to uh, somebody else. We're, you're certainly not hiring a therapist or a psychotherapist, you know, and it, we're definitely, you know, we're doing a fair amount of training, but the essence of the reason that people have hired us for so long at the levels in which they have is because we are the best performance coaches in the industry. Not just us saying it, thousands of people have been saying it for years because we only focus on helping you become uber successful selling real estate. And that's really what our focus is. Because I'll tell you what we've learned. And this is interesting. When you become really successful at selling real estate and your financial worries go away and you have financial security, it's amazing how how many of your other problems sort of just, you know, go away at the same time. Money or the lack of money or the fear of lack of money is the root of so many other problems. Your health problems occasionally because you're, you know, all these things manifest as a result of you feeling financially insecure. Uh, addiction mm-hmm. problems, all of this. And Divorce, when you, depression. Exactly. It's all kind of in that same bucket. And most of it can be traced back to financial stress. So Julie and I, train. we personally and we train all of our coaches to just be performance coaches because we know ultimately when your financial house is completely in order, when you are successful at your chosen career path, so many of the other things that you think are important that are bouncing around in your head, you don't even remember them. That's what happens is on the other side of becoming really successful at something where you see yourself being successful at every day. You see the benefits financially, personally, uh, even spiritually, I dare I say. You see and feel yourself helping other people, in this case, buying and selling real estate. That is the lift that all of you want to have. And that's truly, I'm going to guess, the reason why all of you guys uh, choose to hire a coach. Just make sure you're hiring someone who's an actual coach. Speaking of which... Thank you for that ramp up to point number three, what performance real estate coaching should not be. Here are some examples. And we've heard this from some of you who have been through other programs. It should not be phone a friend. You can be friendly with your performance coach, but that's not the point of hiring them. Well, that's that's very important because that's one of the biggest problems that people have Mm -hmm. is they, again, are just, sometimes they join coaching organizations and they're assigned to somebody. Sure. And they didn't, they didn't, the agent didn't have an opportunity to qualify whether the person that they're being assigned to actually is going to be any good. Appropriate to them. Exactly. And so what happens again also is that then they're pushed into, and Julie's going to talk about this into a formatted training session. It's not coaching. Okay, now we're on day one of your 90-day plan, and this is what you're going to be doing. So here's your homework. Report back to me the following week. But it's not customized to you. It's not working through your... You might be, for example, unbelievably good. And we've had thousands of clients like this. Unbelievably good at cold calling, at, you know, prospecting, at proactive lead generation. You've got that, you know, tough as nails mindset and you kick butt at it, but you are horrible at centers of influence and past clients, right? So here's an interesting little thought. If you're really good at one particular thing and you're not really good at another thing, but the one particular thing that you're really good at, you could go from good to beyond great. A performance coach is not going to try to take your energy and focus away from the thing that you have the potential to be the best at and try to get you to be good at something that you will struggle and resist the whole time. A great performance coach is going to take a holistic but very targeted approach to helping you become the best version of you as a real estate practitioner. Because guess what? You can be really good at two or three things in real estate. And I'll tell you what they are, proactively generation, pre-qualifying and presenting. If you get really good at those three things, you're probably going to you know, make a choice that maybe the other things that everyone's telling you, you should be really focused on in your life, in your business. You might make a decision while well, those things don't matter. If you had 10 listings right now and you had 10 pendings right now, and somebody calls you up and says you need to be doing direct mail in order to generate listings, and you know you don't because you know how to proactively lead generate, well, guess what? You're not going to be seduced into believing that there's an easy button out there because you know better. So you guys get the point? So this is a very specific approach and it's not phone a friend. Phone a friend is where you talk about the weather, you talk about your dog, you talk about- You should actually phone a friend. Yeah. If you want to talk about that. Right. You don't need to pay your friends, okay? So you touched on another thing just a second ago. What coaching should not be, you talked about it, playbook or cookie cutter, one size fits all content or the coach's particular menu 
based solely on their own experience. That happens a lot with agents that have been successful and kudos to them. That's great. But they did it a specific way and sort of beginning coaches think that since they were successful doing it their way, that that's what they should coach. And that's natural because that's the content they know the most, but that's not necessarily what's appropriate for you. To your point about somebody that kills it doing a particular thing, but if that's not how the coach did it or the person self-proclaimed coach, then maybe that's a mismatch. Well, I mean, just how many clients have we had who will come to our coaching organization who are already, you know, doing 15 to $20 million a year, let's say, Mm -hmm. or even less or even more. And all of their business comes from centers of influence and past clients. And then we'll ask them some questions and we'll figure out that they could actually increase their business by 20 or 30% with centers of influence and past clients if they're to make these changes and, you know, do this, more of this, less of that. Mm -hmm. Yet they're showing up because they want to learn how to do uh, branding, right? They want to, and so- you know, they think they have to. Right. Because they've been getting all this peer pressure from the industry about you got to be your own brand, right? There's value to all of that, guys. But the point of it is, here's an interesting statistical fact. After five years, um, when you've been in the business for five years, something like 80% of your business, if you've worked your centers of influence and past clients correctly, is going, you know, your business is going to come from centers of influence and past clients. Now, you guys understanding what I'm saying? So some of you are put so, allow yourselves to be put under so much pressure from all kinds of different, you know, corners of the industry. You got to build a team. Well, congratulations, Julie. You sold 50 houses with you and assistant. Now add five buyer's agents. Well, you need to have somebody who's been experienced with building a team as your coach. You need to have someone who's been experienced with helping you to go through and drill down whether or not your centers of influence and past client plan is actually operating at its highest level. Do you know how to quantify it? Do you know how to go actually and figure out the essentially you know, put numbers against what you're considering doing to decide whether or not it's a a path worth following. How many of you right now are doing marketing and branding without even holding it accountable? And it's incredibly frustrating, isn't it? I mean, Julie and I feel it too. Sure. But how many of you are continuously doing marketing and branding and advertising in YouTube videos and Instagrams and TikToks? And there's no real way to know whether it's working, but everyone says that's what I'm supposed to be doing. So after all, that's what I'm supposed to be doing. And so you're diverting your energies away from what you could be excellent at, the best at, to do something that's novel or a shiny object. Do you guys get it? So you got to have a real estate coach help you to really discover what you could be really great at. And if you're at present not really great at anything, well, that's actually kind of an advantage to you because then you have an open book as to what you then can choose to really drill down on. Remember, a very well-balanced business, not just real estate business, typically has five to seven lead generation spokes. Five to seven sources of business, but the first sources of uh, the first spokes in your lead generation wheel and no matter who you are, it should always be centers of influence and past client number one. And if you're not, if that's not something you feel comfortable doing, we still want you to do it. But number two, proactive lead generation. So you guys get the whole story here. It's a customized, personalized approach. Yes. Yeah, so you, the spokes in the wheel, I agree with you a thousand percent. Everybody has a center of influence, can build a center of influence. These are our favorite types of transactions. Anybody who's licensed because they know, love, and trust you. It requires the least amount of skill. Absolutely. And and they like you. They're mostly your friends, right? It's all good. So that's the universal spoke. But the combination of your next four or five spokes can be quite different from client to client, right? And how you go about building those spokes on the wheel is a custom approach, okay? So we can talk about that in future. You also said something else, Julie, which was really worth repeating. A lot of times you're going to hire a, and I'm air quoting here, real estate coach who has been, maybe they were moderately successful. You don't know if they've been successful or not because you didn't pre-qualify them. We're going to give you their pre-qual questions here in a second. But maybe they claim to have built a business from YouTube videos, let's just say. Well, okay, is that something you really want to do? Do you really want to do YouTube videos? Is that something you're really going to invest your time and money and effort into? Do you have the time to wait and speculate? And guess what? There's a billion people thinking YouTube videos are going to be the shiny object that they're all going to pursue to turn their businesses around. Well, if that's, you know, so you're hiring that person to tell you how to do YouTube videos without actually qualifying them as, as to whether or not they've been successful selling real estate, let alone coaching other people or training other people to sell real estate using their lead generation idea. You've never really, you've not run the, uh, essentially run these potential coaches through any kind of filtering. And now what have you done? You've wasted months, maybe your whole entire year trying to make something work that was never really going to work in the first place. Now that's not to say 
It doesn't work for some people. It just might not be the right fit for you. And so here's what breaks my heart as I, I you know, where my mind went when I was, I was saying what I just did. Some of you are, uh, have been up and down, you know, this path so many times that you're beginning to believe, or you already do believe that you're the problem. Maybe you are at some extent, I'm not going to say you're not, but let's just say, you know, maybe you have bad follow through or you don't follow directions. I don't know, but you're starting to uh, believe that you don't have the potential to be successful, let alone successful in real estate. Well, I want you to give yourself a little bit of a break and open your mind to the fact that maybe the reason that you're not uh, experiencing the levels of success, or maybe you're even failing is because you've made the mistake of following the wrong uh, advice. Well put. And that does come in many flavors. So that keeps us just for a second to tie up this point, what coaching should not be. You were talking about it, a shiny object bazaar, a flea market of ideas. A lot of that goes to video speculation, trying stuff out on you. Oh, this one makes me crazy. Sometimes self-proclaimed coaches will try stuff out on you and see how it goes. Using you as a real estate guinea pig, that's back to training again. You should try this. You should try that. Another mistake is coaches saying it's my way or the highway approach. And I've had coaching clients come to us where they, they just came off of somebody's seminar, webinar, whatever, and they said, if you're not doing this, you're not going to make it. You're not a salesperson. You're not going to be powerful. Well, maybe that person already has been pretty successful. They're just, quote, stuck at $30 million, right? And, but they get off their game. It messes with them. Convincing you that you suck if you don't cert do certain things certain ways that you know you'll never, ever do. That's lack of versatility from the coach. Lack of experience in them not being a real coach, them being more of a trainer. And I'll give you guys another little, this, this isn't in Julie's notes. When you're hiring a real estate coach or interviewing someone to be a real estate coach, look how frequently they talk about their own personal success versus the success that they brought to other people. Yes. Listen for how frequently they use personal pronouns. I this, I the other thing, right? Because what that's an indication of is somebody who maybe wants to be a real estate coach one day, but they really are not qualified to be a real estate coach yet. Maybe they could do training for a while. Maybe they could do some group coaching and they could work up to be one-on-one -on -one coaches. But the reality of it is, is they're not yet ready to take you on as a coaching client. And I got, I want to remind you guys of the four levels of mastery. And, and this is a, a, applicable to all of us at all times. First level is what you call the uh, un, un, unconscious incompetence. That's where you don't know what you don't know. Unconscious incompetence. The next level of mastery after that is conscious incompetence. That's where you're actually learning what you don't know. You've been willing to make yourself vulnerable, willing to admit yourself to yourself in the world that you're an ignoramus and you need to hit hard reset and learn new things. Now, when you uh, go past that level, then you're consciously competent. And that's where you still are having to work to think about what you're going to say. You're still having to make some effort. You're still putting in the work and reminding yourself of the process, but pretty much you're good at it. But the phase above that is where you become consciously competent. And consciously competent is where you know you're good, you know what you're going to say, is, and some of you are experiencing that in real estate or other forms of your life. Maybe you've been a, a coach, a trainer of you know kids' gymnastics or something like that. So you know how to get the job done. What is the issue for most coaches is they're never actually, or most want to be coaches, is they're never willing. And act, and Julie and I are starting a coaches training um, class in the spring or the summer, or sometime the next you know twelve months. And what we are looking for are people that are willing to make themselves vulnerable because we'll have a lot of top producing agents, a lot of agents with teams, a lot of agents that I just want to give back at the point in my career, in my life when I just want to make contribution. And I get all of that. And that's a great emotional state to be in. But if you're not willing to admit that you're an ignoramus and you know nothing, if you're not willing to put yourself back in that place of being a new learner, you are not going to be receptive to learning how to actually be a coach. And I remember that when Julie and I were learning how to do all this years ago, decades ago now, it was super hard because Julie and I were super successful at selling real estate, 100 to 200 homes per year for almost 10 years in a row, mostly listings. We sold over 100 homes our first year. We were badasses selling real estate, and now we had to go and make ourselves vulnerable, admitting we didn't know what the hell we were doing, uh, you know, learning how to coach. And I because think because it's not the same thing, it's totally and completely not the same thing. When you've been successful, that's a really good point. Just because you've been successful at, uh, you know, selling real estate at a high level, maybe you've even sold more houses than Julie and I doesn't mean that you know how to coach somebody else to do the same thing. And there's a huge differentiator that happens from someone that can operate at a very high level then to being able to make the next step, which training others to operate at a high level as well. And I, I tell you guys this with 100% certainty. Learning to be a great real estate coach is a billion times harder 
than learning how to be a massive producing agent. There's no question. Being a massive producing agent is simple compared to helping people essentially, you know, become the best versions of themselves as real estate practitioners as their performance coach. There's no comparison. 5,000% agree, especially when you put that filter on when you say to be a successful real estate coach, what that really means is getting results. Yeah. You know, well, but that's, there's that, a difference between like telling you what to do and here's some skills and here's some scripts versus keeping you motivated, keeping you in uh, momentum and holding you accountable to what your goals are. Right. And that's another thing we're going to, we're talking a lot about what coaching is not. We're also going to talk about what you, we're going to shift to what you should expect from your coaching relationship. Okay. So that's number point number four. What should you expect? Well, your expectations should be to move to the next level of success, business success, faster than you can on your own, following a specific and personalized plan. You should be educated, motivated, and take action following a dollar productive schedule. You should have weekly coaching homework based on your personal production goals and be accountable to the results. The coach should know your strengths and weaknesses, bring out more of your strengths, and help you to eliminate your weaknesses. And the coach, there's so much, there's so much nuance to being um, a great real estate coach. It's almost like you know, talking with um, talking with anybody. You're not gonna approach every conversation with everybody the same way. Just socially. Now imagine if you're being paid to have a conversation and you're being held accountable to the results you get of, uh, as a result of your ability to be a great coach for that person. And by accountable, I mean, and this is the reason that we call ourselves performance coaches, is because we want you to hold our coaching organization accountable based on the numbers, not based on feel-good bullshit, not based on you know touchy-feely stuff, woo-woo stuff. We want you to hold us accountable based on numbers. Did you sell more homes? Did you make more net profit? Did you pay off that debt? Did you make that investment? That's what a performance coach does. Like Michael Phelps coach, did you win, <laughs> right? Yeah. There's, there's no in the middle. That's what a performance coach does. That's the reason so few people are performance coaches because they don't want to be held accountable. They can't be held accountable because they don't know how to actually deliver the results. And, you know, this is the problem ultimately with a lot of marketing and branding and a lot of the other stuff out there because you can't actually hold it accountable. You know, we lean into marketing and branding because it's the big red hole that, you know, black hole so many of you spend money on hoping and praying that someday something will work. Well, what's going to work in your real estate career is when you learn how to do the real work of real estate and then you're going to start getting real results consistently. Whereas how many of you are being seduced into believing that you have to build a brand? Look, there is a place for marketing and advertising. There is even a place for buying buyer leads. There is a place for branding. But primarily, you've got to decide what that place is for you and not rely on some, frankly, incompetent trainer telling you otherwise. Very well put. So that brings us to the great sorting. We're going to put on our sorting hat now. Just like Harry Potter's. If you're still confused (laughs) or searching for the right real estate performance coach... Because we've sorted out the difference be tr- between training, life coaching, therapy, what you shouldn't be expecting from coaching, what you should be expecting from coaching. Well, now you can simply use these four specific filters and interview your prospects. So the first one is, has the coach prospect been licensed and sold real estate at a high level? Are they currently licensed and active? Now, you might think that that would be obvious, right? But there are organizations where they will tell you, oh, it's, you know, sales is sales. It's all the same thing. I don't have to have sold real estate. We have a sale, we have a coaching playbook and it's all the same. Well, it's not the same. You need a real estate performance coach who has walked in your shoes and is experiencing the same things. Expand that even. Okay, you're thinking about hiring a real estate coach. How about you're thinking about hiring a roofer? How about you're thinking about actually hiring someone to help you with a maybe a life coach? Have they actually done it before? And in real estate, it's so easy to discern whether they've done it before. Okay, Bob, so you're a real estate coach. Do you have a real estate license? Oh, you do. What state? Oh, you don't. So why would you hire someone who actually has never even bothered to get a license, let alone sell real estate? There you are. Okay, so that was filter number one. Number two, assuming that they made it through that filter, number two, has the coach sold at least 100 homes in one year? Now, why that number? I believe that that is because you're not going to do that kind of production unless you have more than one spoke in your wheel, unless you have developed your scripts, your skills, your presentations. Nobody can do that unless they have all of those things highly developed. They are actually at that level you were talking about, unconscious competence. 
They've got it sorted out and they are doing lather, rinse, repeat. Now that said, if you have somebody who sold, for example, 30 homes a year or 50 homes a year and they've done super high-end luxury, sure, I, that's not the Adjust same. Adjust accordingly. We've had coaching clients, uh, Rob Johnson in Greenwich, Connecticut, I'm thinking of. His average sale price has got to be $20 million. Well, I mean, if Rob ever wants to be a, a luxury real estate coach for us, I promise you we're going to hire him. Hired but he, immediately. But he's never hired, he's never sold over 100 homes per year. But you have to adjust accordingly. For the most part, that first question, or really the first question of how you had a license, that will you guys will be shocked how frequently that knocks out the prospective coach, the person that's you know purporting themselves to be a real estate coach because they've never had licenses before. Now, if you find some that've had licenses to Julie's second filter, you got to ask them how many you know have you sold at least a hundred homes per year? Because why? Many of the people out there, especially those that are selling pra- uh, passive lead generation stuff, they may have had licenses before, but they actually weren't that successful selling real estate. They may have been somebody part of somebody's team. They may have done marketing and branding and, you know, they sold 14 houses and then because they, you know, spoke at their real estate convention and all of a sudden they're having people, you guys get it? That's how this, the snowball starts to roll. That person is maybe a great person to know, maybe has some potential advice for you. Maybe he's even good at training, but when you're hiring a real estate coach, set your bar higher. There you are. Point filter number three has the coach or prospective coach sold at least a hundred homes a year for five consecutive years. Again, adjust accordingly for luxury and unusual types of things. But I would say, has the coach sold consistently and predictably at a high level? And I would even expand this for five to seven years because that will encompass a hot market, a less hot market, you know, low interest rate environment, fear of missing out buyers and sellers, pandemic, everything. They need to have been successful in not just what type of market. You know, honestly, Julie, we should add our fifth filter, a fifth filter because you're really bringing that great point up. So the second question was, is have you sold at least 100 homes per year? The third question, the third filter is, has that coach sold at least 100 homes a year for at least five years in a row? Now, why is there a difference? Because someone could have sold, had 100 sales because they listed some buildings in Miami or because they listed a development land and sold a bunch of lots. Or you guys get the idea. Maybe sure. back in the REO days, they would have listed a bunch of REOs and easily had 100 homes. And they're really good at doing REO. But if they have to go and start doing normal consumer listings, you know, resale listings, buena suerte. Good luck. They're not going to know what to do is at the same level as maybe working with the REOs. Much less coach you to do it. Exactly. So you've got to be really careful who you're hiring. And if anybody pushes back, if they're not... If a potential coach is not putting it face forward, what their actual experience is in the marketplace, and they're trying to bamboozle you with a lot of you know shock and awe, you need to really be asking yourself, well, okay, I love the fact that you're you know a great presenter, a great motivational, you know, you do all this stuff. Well, where is your actual validation that you know what the hell you're doing before I give you my money? You got to ask those questions. Otherwise, you could very well potentially lead yourself down a wrong path, which is going to lead you to losing a year. And then we know statistically, it's our belief that most agents are failing within 24 months or less. And it's because they've stayed on the wrong path for too long. They weren't willing to admit that they made a mistake and they need to essentially, I think, hit hard reset on their real estate businesses so they can get back on track and not make the same mistake twice. And the fourth filter, has the coach conducted and been paid for at least 100,000 coaching calls in their career so far? Now, why also been paid for? Because that makes it different than presenting on a Zoom call, presenting on you know, an office meeting, something like that, or pumping out a whole bunch of YouTube coaching and training videos. That's different. They need to have been paid for because if they stink at it, the market will not continue to pay for it. Okay. Break down what Julie just said, because it's critical. Has the prospective coach that you're considering hiring. Now, Julie and I put down a hundred thousand, but it could even frankly be 10,000. I would even go as far as to say, even if they've done a thousand, right? If they've done a thousand paid coaching calls where they're getting paid with real money, <laughs> you know, <laughs> by multiple clients, by multiple clients <laughs> right. to, to perform coaching services for them. And if they, you know, if they made all the other filters, chances are that's someone you want to give serious consideration to. Now, Julie and I said over a hundred thousand, cause each of us have done way more than a hundred thousand uh, coaching calls in our careers. We don't, we actually, we stopped at a hundred thousand. How many years ago? I mean, we were living in Texas, so it's been a while. <laughs> I don't know, seven years ago? Seven years ago. So we've done way more than 100,000. The moral of the story is, is that you might be able to find a really good uh, coach who's done 
uh, fewer coaching calls than we have, but they have to be paid coaching calls. So the differentiator is they have to have been paid because again, uh, people are calling themselves coaches. They may have spoke at some office meetings, may have even spoken at a convention in front of a thousand people, or they've done a YouTube video and they've got a hundred thousand subscribers. They're going to try to change the, your question away from uh, how many paid coaching calls have you done to essentially, well, I present, you know, I've, I've coached, you know, 10,000 agents and you're going to say, well, explain to me what that means. Have you been paid to perform, to provide at least, you know, 10,000 one-on-one coaching calls? Followers it, are not paid coaching calls. You guys get the difference? Cause that's what a lot of people do. They're trying to claim experience as coaches because they've done presenting and they've done training. Hopefully by now you realize it's not the same thing, not even close so Julie, point number six. Yes, point number six. Here we are down to it. What level of coaching is appropriate for you? Semi-private or one-on-one elite coaching? Well, if you're just getting started and you don't have a pre-listing package, scripts, listing presentation, or buyer's presentation, you should start out in our premier coaching. But if you've mastered the basics and you're looking to take your craft to the next level, it may be time to join as a private one-on-one elite coaching client. We can help you decide what's best for you. But what I have to say is don't go into the next quarter, the next month, or the next year wandering around the real estate wilds, you know, being blown from one thing to the next, checking your email, somebody's selling you something today, it's different than tomorrow. Don't guess at your career. One thing I know for certain is everyone listening needs to be transactional now. You guys need to get out of feast and famine. You need to stop fearing what's next in the real estate market and get to work. You're going to get to the point when you're very competent, when you're at that conscious competence phase where you really don't care. You don't even read the headlines. Like, you you know, you've blocked Inman emails. You're not paying attention to any of the hype. You're not paying attention. You don't even care what the interest rates are. No, you're making your own market. You you can sell real estate confidently, consistently, no matter what's going on that's freaking the rest of the world out. That's the that's the level that we want to get you guys to. Look, your skill set is going to have to adjust to the market. You have to meet the market where it is. And Julie said something a second ago, and I, I want to go back and I want to review it. If the coach has not sold real estate in a changing market, let alone a buyer's market, let alone a crashing market, you can do better. A lot of our coaches, they've been selling real estate and they've been coaching with us for over 15 years, which means they've been through the great housing crash. Julie and I took our first coaching client on in 1999. Eight or nine, yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, and I don't remember what year it was either. I think it was yeah. 1999. Mm-hmm. Michael and Robin Gordon. Yeah. And Michael and Robin Gordon, you guys can message them. Uh, Michael and Robin are some of the most successful agents at Berkshire Hathaway. I think they're number five or something. Mm -hmm. And we're still very close to them. A lot of our personal coaching clients, Julie and I have had for that damn long. The Kenmore team in Kennewick, Washington. They're another great example. Yeah, we were with them. I mean, we knew them when they had their their kids and now their kids are in college. Yeah. Yeah. I know. And gone from, you know, the basics to a fully functioning, completely optimized team. Right. Now, it's very hard to have the courage to ask somebody that you like or that you maybe even look up for look up to these questions but you have to because if you are hiring a dog a vet to perform a surgery on your dog and the surgeon is the greatest nicest guy and you know, the rest of it are you just going to end at that are you going to end at the fact that oh you guys happen to play golf at the same place oh you know he's a nice guy and it really, you know tells jokes and the rest of it are you going to end there or are you going to expect that doctor to validate the fact that they know how to actually perform that particular procedure to save your beloved dog you guys get it but what agents do is they just attach emotionally or they you know get essentially seduced by the whiz bang and by the shiny object and they never actually qualify the person they're listening to i think you know there's no other industry i can think of where it's so confusing, whether it's a mm-hmm. trainer, a therapist, you know, a life coach, a psychotherapist, it's all intermingled and you guys don't know how to discern one thing for the other. That's the reason that we're drawing a line in the sand. Coaches at our organization, Julie and I are, you know, personally, we're performance coaches. We're going to focus on the things that are going to help you make money and become successful consistently because we have seen the long-term benefits of just doing that one thing. So we're just like you guys. We're not going to try to be Dr. Phil or try to be, you know, a psychotherapist. We're not going to try to do any of that stuff. We're not going to try to be your life coach. Your life is going to coach itself when you're consistently making money. I got news for you. A lot of the problems that most humans experience are as a result of that omnipresent sense of scarcity. 
consistent income, the feeling vulnerable because of the changing markets. When you can essentially remove that from your life for eternity, you're going to feel a sense of liberation and freedom like you've never experienced before. But you're not going to experience that if the person that you're listening to has never actually done it for themselves. I mean, think about this. Would you hire someone, and a lot of people do, to be your financial advisor who's broke? You know? <laughs> you know, it's funny. I have all these things going through my head as you're talking. That's a great example. And people don't do a very good job vetting them either, I believe. And that's also a mixed up thing, right? Some of them are selling stuff to you. Some of them well, aren't. But that is true. I mean, you're, yeah. there's essentially all these people that are financial advisors. And all, I mean, Julie and I were on the phone with JP Morgan the other day. They were trying to get our you know business and great you know investment bank, the whole thing. And I started asking them, the guys who I could tell by their voices weren't that old. And I did a little LinkedIn research on them ahead of time. I'm guessing maybe early 30s. These dudes were salespeople, 100%. And that's fine. And they were honestly just average salespeople based on their presentation. But all they were doing essentially is uh, basically going through the uh, process where they can then, you know, essentially have our money and then they can start charging us 2% per year and 20% of whatever the gains are that particular year, assuming there's any gains. But going through that process, I started asking them questions about what their own personal experience was, what their own personal success mm -hmm. rate was, who people like us they've worked for, and they didn't and weren't willing to answer any of the actual questions directly. And it isn't because they couldn't or wouldn't rather, it's because they couldn't because they hadn't actually done it. I'm not going to hire that. I'm not going to listen to that guy for financial advice. Would you? I'm not going to hire the vet who's never done that procedure before. Would you? I'm not going to hire a roofer who's never even been up in a ladder before. You wouldn't either. And yet, how many of you guys are taking advice right now from unqualified people about how to build your real estate business? You need to ultimately, especially after listening to us for the last 41 minutes, you need to ultimately be your own guru. You need to ultimately become your own best coach. You need to start calling yourself out on your own BS. Are you actually thinking about hiring a coach or do you just want to hire a friend? Are you thinking about hiring a coach or do you want someone that's just going to be essentially there to you know, pat you on the back occasionally? A coach does uh, the patting of the back and the encouraging, mm -hmm. but a real coach is going to be willing to hold you accountable. A real coach is going to be willing to call you out on your BS and all of you are going to have BS and make even sometimes... Um, and truthfully, this is what a real coach does. They're not going to put your feelings ahead of the reason that you hired them to perform the service. So if, if you're off track and you're screwing around and you're losing money and the coach is seeing that you're going to fall off a financial cliff sometime in the future, these types of questions that you all never ask yourselves, a real coach is going to have the courage to actually confront you on that in a manner that's appropriate for you. And that's, again, that gets into the difference between coaching and training. How many of you right now would hate to have somebody that's always looking over your shoulder and is willing to actually do the work and take the time uh, to call you out on your BS? And those of you who aren't willing to, well, then you should you know, think about joining one of our more basic coaching programs. Those of you who are, you're ready for one of the one-on-one -on -one coaching programs or elite coaching. And you can learn more about that on our website, timandjulieharris.com. Julie, anything else you'd like to say? Well, I mean, when is the right time to pull the trigger on this? Right now, really, probably yesterday. What's the quote more, about planting the tree? Right? More like 18 or 24 months ago. Yeah, the best time yes. to plant a tree was 20 years ago. Uh, the the second be best time. The second best time is now. But you all should have been hiring real. And our business really went, you know, took off like crazy in 2021 and still is because a lot of people were realizing the market was changing and they needed to change the market. And, That's you know, right. it's also funny. This is the number one listen to daily podcast for real estate agents in at least the United States. You know, we've had millions of downloads, like over 20 million downloads. Mm -hmm. But what's fascinating to me is how many have been listening to us forever and they liked our jib jab. They liked right. what we had to say. Sure. And they were like comfort food to a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And yet they'd bounce off and they'd go do the other things. Yeah. And they then rationalize, well, the other things are the things that are working. In other words, you guys were leaning into the paid buyer leads and the, you know, the branding and the marketing. Well, I have news for you. The market was making those things look like they were working. The buoyant market, the fear of missing out from buyers and sellers, the low interest rates, those were making everybody look good. That's a very common thing I'm hearing lately. And, you know, many of you, and it's okay if this is your profile, incoming coaching clients, they'll say, you know, I've been listening to you guys for four years. <laughs> I know. And every podcast I say to myself, 
Maybe this is the time. So today I finally decided to contact you and that's okay. And if you just got your license and you're a newbie, we have a program for you as well. If you're not sure, maybe you're somewhere in between. Maybe you're somebody who's had a failure to launch. You know, you popped a few quick deals back when the market was hotter. You, you know, sold some friends' houses and now you're wondering where your next deals are going to come from. We can help you too, but only if you communicate with us. Here's the pathway forward. In the show notes, uh, click on the link to join Premier Coaching. That is going to be the best pathway forward for most of you. If you're ready for a private elite one-on-one coach, uh, you can text me directly and I'll filter and sort. We have a few people that will, well, I might also have help you, but you can text me directly at 512-758-0206. Julie is looking for another, how many clients? Five or six. Five or six personal coaching clients. Julie is very expensive and very particular, but if you want to be coached by who many people have said is the number one real estate coach in the nation, just text me directly at 512-758-0206 and I will pre-qualify you. Um, And then if I think you're a good match for Julie, it is going to be production-based by the way. Um, I'm not going to, you know, want to have you consider something that you cannot financially afford or not mentally or emotionally ready for just being honest with you, but then text me directly at 512-758-0206. If you want to get to know us, if you want to, you know, essentially completely refill your tank, join Premier Coaching. It's the easy button and we've made it super simple because the first 30 days is free. And yes, that does include a daily semi-private coaching call uh, with one of our Harris certified coaches, but do understand Premier coaching is mostly training. There is some coaching that happens, but it's a semi-private daily coaching call. So it's mostly training. You get the coaching when you upgrade out of premier coaching. That's, it makes sense because guess what? We have to hire, you know, we have staff coaches that want to be paid, right? <laughs> right. And, and, and you're paying for them, you know, for half hour, an hour uh, each week. And as a result, that costs us money. So just keeping these things real. I don't want any of you to make contact with our company and, uh, you know, not be ready to take action. So I'd rather set the bar somewhat high so that when you do make contact with us, you're at least certain, you're at least knowledgeable of the fact that you need to hire a real estate coach and be willing to put yourself back in that place of conscious incompetence. Don't wait for the market to hand you your ass. Don't wait to have, you know, a bad year. Don't wait to lose a bunch of listings. Don't wait to create financial problems. Don't wait, take action on it now. And then a great coach, one of our great coaches will help you to determine what your, frankly, your smartest and most profitable path forward is. So guys, thank you for listening to today's podcast. We certainly appreciate all of your love and support over the years. Have a fantastic day. We'll talk to you on the show tomorrow. Hello, thank you for having watched this video. Please remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's right. And don't forget to hit that like button, leave your comments and questions below, and we will get right back with you. Thank you for watching this video. Remember to watch the next one. You're going to love that one.